I've got four different samples I'm going to show you. Each one highlights something different. First one we're start out here is this animation sample. I'll run in this here. Now this has animations attached to these different controls. So these controls here, when I check them, it activates the animation. So hopefully you notice that it starts out slow and got really fast and then slowed back down again. So there we go, same thing, same behavior there. That's because it has in and out on the animation type and then the interpolation, I believe, is quintic, which is the quadratic with the multiplier on it. Vertical, on the other hand, is going to use linear. So watch, it's just going to go the same speed all the way up and down. Okay, so they both take the same amount of time, two seconds, but the interpolation is different on those. And then scale, this one's going to scale when I move the mouse over it. And it has two on it. It has one for the X and one for the Y because the scales are separately. So you could have it scale differently if you wanted to. Now over here, when I move this to a color and then click, or I guess just mouse over this, it will change that color. And another one on it, when I click on the rectangle, the rectangle rotates 90 degrees because that's cool. All right, let's get... There goes a... Anyway, so there you go. All right, so let's take a look at the code on this. Oh, wait, one more. I forgot. So here, this monkey uh, is from a SVG. I went to Wikimedia and got this SVG of a monkey. And if you open it up, and I'll show you how to, what the code looks like. This, so this is a path, a T path in here, and it draws based on the paths we give you. And then this guy here has a path animation on him, that little rectangle. And so what it does is it follows the paths. And so they both have the same paths. So this one draws it, this one follows it. Which I think looks really, really cool. Okay. So now let's look at the code here. So there's not a lot of code because most of this is done through adding the components at the design time. So the horizontal checkbox has a float animation on it. The float animation is attached to position.x. So position contains x and y. So you have to specify that it's x specifically. Uh, duration is two seconds. The interpolation is quintic. Animation type in and out, whereas you notice this one has a float animation right here this guy animation is just in, in animation types in but it's linear so it really doesn't make any difference this only applies if it's a non-linear interpolation okay and then the stop value so it starts at zero goes to 500 triggers when is checked is true does inverse when it's unchecked now a couple notes here you can set stop from or start from current to true and what that'll do is it'll start from whatever currently the value is at. If for some reason your checkbox may be in a state besides 0 or 100, like let's say someone unchecks it as it's halfway across the screen, then what would happen is if you said start from current is true, then it would change start value to whatever it currently is. Now, in this case where I have it looping, or the an inverse trigger, what will happen is this will get changed to 200, and then when I inverse it, it will go from 500 to 200. So it changes that value. So you just gotta keep that in mind that if you do set start from current, it changes the start value. All right, and then I showed you the difference here with this one. Uh, this one goes 40 to 440 because it goes down and it does it, uh, yeah, it's checked, so it's the same. The scale on the button here, here he is, button one. It has on scale X and scale Y, Trigger, mouse over, true and false. Okay. Now, over here on my color panel, what I've done here is actually used live bindings. So, first of all, your animations don't usually show up in here for live bindings. And so if you right-click on it, though, and say bind visually, you see it gets added to there. It doesn't have any properties, but if you can click these ellipses, and we'll say stop value and add it, and now we can now live bind this. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this one. 
So what I'm doing here is the color panels color property is live bound to the color animation stop value. So that means the value that this gets animated to the color animation gets animated to is going to always be whatever color I just selected here. All right. And so this one says start from current. So that means it'll always change the start value to whatever currently this rectangle is, which should be what it stopped at last time. And uh, that's it. Yeah. Duration. I guess I can make the duration a little longer so you can see it better, but uh, you, you all saw what it did and it triggers on mouse over. Now uh, I find that typically it, an inverse doesn't work when you use start from current because of the fact it changes that start value. But there may be a situation when that's exactly what you want it to do. So that's an option for you. Uh, code. Oh, there's code on the click event for this guy here. And so what I'm doing here is I'm using the uh, FMX Any T Animator Animate Float. So this is the animate method that you can use. And you just tell it the name of the object you want to animate, the property you want to animate, the stop value, and the duration. You can also uh, overload this or not overload it, but it has uh, null procedures or uh, optional parameters that you can specify interpolation and animation type. So I've always set the rotation angle back to zero. Now it's rotating 90 degrees, 90 degrees and zero because it's a square look exactly the same. So it rotates it to 90 and then drops back to zero again so that it looks like it's rotating again. Now, one note about using the procedure here, the method here, is I don't have access to the event. So I can't have something happen on the finish animate. On the finish event. So there's that. I'm going to change that. It was a little slow for my taste. Two. Okay. Uh, that's it. A little setup here. Constructor code in the create. That's it. All there is to it. Oh, I can show you the other one. Second form. In here... So all we have is the rectangle click. We have the start the animation. So here's the T path and it has a data property. I'm going to come in here. And so this, if you open up an SVG file, which there's the path to it right there, then you'll see there's lots of XML. And in one spot in there, you'll see, I think it's a D uh, element has all this data that starts out like this and just goes along and you just copy that data out and paste it into here. And this is the path data. So you can get this path data from an SVG. You can make the path data using a tool like Inkscape, which is a free vector animation tool, or you can just write this manually. The preview shows up as soon as you lose focus from the edit box. So what I'll usually do is click OK and hold it for a second, and you'll see the preview shows up. And then that's how you know it worked. The This guy here has a the uh, rectangle has a path animation on it and it has a path data here, exact same data, and it's gonna just animate that when the it's activated. So it takes 30 seconds, it loops, so it's gonna keep running through that path forever, and that's all there is to it. Pretty cool, pretty powerful, really, what you can do with that, with 